friends, happy Thursday. It's Pastor Karen with the Thoughtful Thursday today. Um, it's getting to be the second week, or we're into the second week of January um, of the new year. And so if you um, read about New Year's resolutions, I, I think this researchers say that most people have already discarded um, their New Year's resolution and they're not even really thinking about it already um, in the middle of January. Um, I want to chat a little bit today about New Year's resolutions and about a practice that I've um, been doing for the last couple of years, the last several years, I would say. And it's helped me stay focused and it's helped me at least be able to circle back to the things that I decided are going to be important for me this year or things that I wanted to focus on. Um, and I'll give credit to a book that I read with a group of women, oh, oh my gosh, a million years ago, feels like now, um, called My One Word, and it's written by Mike Ashcraft and Rachel Olson, My One Word. And this book encourages us to um, find one word that we're going to use to focus ourselves um, this year, and not so much to make resolutions, but to decide what word we're going to focus on, which may actually inform a lot of our decisions and a lot of our dis, um, actions and um, a lot of the ways that we move forward and move throughout the year. So they, they really kind of discourage us from saying things like, I want to exercise more or I'm going to be healthier or I'm going to eat healthy or I'm going to, you know, um, those kinds of things. And, and so I want to just talk to you through really briefly. Um, I reread a little bit of a blog that they, um, that I found today and it kind of reminded me of this book. It wasn't from this book, but it reminded me of the importance of having intention instead of a resolution. Maybe we think about what is our intention for this year. And so I, as I was reading this blog, it reminded me that um, instead of a resolution or maybe we come up with a resolution, something that we maybe have historically decided that we were going to, you know, resolve to do in this new year. And then we ask ourselves some questions about the resolution. And when we ask ourselves some questions, the answers to those questions then may become our intention for the year. And those words might better um, support us and might better allow us to be successful um, in our in our resolution and maybe far more other things. So I know that sounds a little bit confusing. So let me give you an example. Um, so we'll go with the exercise example, right? Because I think a lot of people start the beginning of the year and say, I'm going to exercise more. And it feels like such a chore, right? And it's hard to start and it's hard to get started. And it's maybe hard to stick with. Um, and so if we use this, this idea where this resolution that we came up with is, I want to exercise more. We ask ourselves some questions about the resolution. Some questions like, you know, how will I feel if I exercise more? Or what will I need um, if I want to exercise more? And the answers to those questions might very well be, I want to feel healthier. I want to feel healthy and, and I will need discipline. I will need support. I will need guidance. And maybe those words, maybe those words of healthy or, or discipline, they become our intention for the year. And when we remind ourselves consistently about wanting to be more disciplined, that may very well lead us to exercise more, right? But it also may lead us to read our Bibles more, to be connected with our friends more, it may encourage us to eat better because we're disciplined. So do you see the connection between being healthy and being disciplined? And yet we're going to focus this year on that word discipline. As I was reading this blog today, I, I couldn't help but you know wonder what um, that would look like if we really made resolutions to do the things that God has asked us to do. Right. And if we if we take everything that God has asked us to do and Jesus has asked us to do and we boil it down, right, the, the Pharisees asked Jesus, what do I need to do to get into heaven? Right. What is what do I what what are the what are the greatest commandments? They said. And what did Jesus say? He said, love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind and strength and love your neighbor as yourself. 
Phew. Okay. So those are big, right? <laughs> love God, love your neighbor, love yourself. And we could easily make those our resolutions. I'm going to love God better this year. I'm going to love my neighbor better this year. I'm going to love myself better this year. But wow, those are really big. And sometimes they're really hard to stay focused on and really hard to keep. So I spent some time today applying this resolution question intention to these three things that Jesus says are so important to love God, to love our neighbor and to love ourself. And so to love God. So our resolution would be, I want to love God more, right? And scripture actually gives us some questions to answer. Um, Jesus speaks in parables, not so much to give us the answer, but to make us think and to generate some questions for us. And so as I was reflecting on this loving God, I, I thought about the Luke chapter six parable where Jesus is talking about two men who built their houses on different foundations. So here's what it says um, in Luke six verses 45 or 47 and 48 says, I will show you what it, what someone is like who comes to me, hears my words and acts on them. This is Jesus talking. That one is like a man building a house who dug deeply and laid the foundation on rock. When a flood came, the river burst against that house, but it could not shake it because it had been well built. But the one who hears and does not act like a man who built his house on ground without a foundation, when the river burst against it, immediately it fell and great was the ruin of that house. So Jesus is saying, how are you going to build your house? How are you going to show your dedication to God, your love for God? What kind of foundation are you going to build your house on? Right? Is it going to be on the rock, on the solid foundation, or is it going to be, you know, in the sand or on the weak land where um, any kind of river or flood um, might just sweep it away? So, so the resolution is I want to love God more. The question is, how am I going to build that foundation? How am I going to stay focused on God? What does that look like for me? And maybe our intentions then become choose, right? We get to choose where we build our house. We have to make every day an intention to say, I'm going to love God today. I'm going to choose to, to focus on God today. Maybe our intention is build. Maybe we feel like we need to build up our relationship with God. We need to, to feel like from our side, it's strong um, and we rely on God more. That's how we love God. We, we strengthen our relationship. We build it. Or maybe the intention is this idea of foundation that maybe we feel like we don't have a strong foundation and we can show love for God when we build this strong foundation in our love for God. So we really want to love God more. Jesus asks us, how are you going to do that? What does that look like for you? And maybe our intention then is choose or build or foundation. So love your neighbor. This seems like an easy one um, to come up with some questions that Jesus asks us. So our, our resolution that we might think this year, we're going to set this resolution. We're going to love our neighbor better because that's what Jesus told us to do. Um, love our neighbor. And yet that, again, seems so broad and so big and so um, kind of hard to stay focused on. And yet we have to point ourselves to the story of the Good Samaritan, right? A man comes amongst robbers. He's kind of just minding his own business. These guys come, they beat him up, they steal his things, and they leave him for dead in the ditch. And then, you know, several people walk by, including a judge and a, a rabbi and a Levite, right? A, a, a person who's going to go work in the, in the temple. Um, and they choose not to take care of this man. They actually choose to walk on the other side of the road, some of them. But then we read that Jesus says, then this Samaritan man, right? A Samaritan. Uh, no one ever thought that anything good would come out of a Samaritan person. They were definitely low low life and, 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 you know, not well thought of. So the fact that Jesus would kind of spin, spin the social um, circle around is very interesting. But this Samaritan man saw this gentleman lying in the ditch and had mercy on him, right? And felt sorry for him and wanted to help him. So he bandaged his wounds and he took him to the hotel, you know, to the inn and he paid his, his 
fair so that he could stay there and heal. And he actually says, if you need to the innkeeper, if you need more, I'll, I'll give you more. Like he can stay as long as he needs to stay until he um, heals. And Jesus said, you know, who, who was the neighbor, right? Who was the neighbor? We find that story in Luke chapter 10, um, verses 30 to 37. If you want to go and read um, the biblical story and not the Karen Barkowski paraphrased version. Um, but that's the story, right? And so we might ask ourselves, what does it mean to be our neighbor? What does this story that Jesus tells us that gives us an example of who is our neighbor? What kinds of things are important in this story? What makes a good neighbor, right? What, what helps us to understand um, what Jesus is asking us? So our resolution might be to love our neighbor. Our questions are exactly that. Who is our neighbor? What does a good neighbor do for each other? How do I act like a good neighbor? And maybe our intention is something like this. Maybe we notice more. Maybe we don't really know our neighbors. Maybe we don't notice that their car hasn't been in the driveway for a couple of days. Are they on vacation? Um, is Maybe the newspapers are, are piling up at the bottom of the driveway. You know, is someone sick in the house? Is there something that we can notice? And is that a good way to love our neighbor? That we're aware, right? That we're that we even have the ability to to know what's going on um, with those around us. And then of course, service, um, really being the servant, right? Really being the one that says, wow, this is, this is a hard situation and I'm gonna do what's right um, for this person. I'm gonna put my own issues aside and I'm gonna serve this person and take care of them. So the resolution is love your neighbor. Jesus asks us a ton of questions in the story of the Good Samaritan, but maybe our intention at the end is noticing or awareness or service. And then we look at love yourself. And I love, love Psalm 139 um, verses 13 to 15. And it says, for it was you who formed my inward parts or you who created me. Some translations say you knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Wonderful are your works that I know very well. My frame was not hidden from you when I was made in secret, intricately woven in the depths of the earth. So we might make a resolution to love ourselves better. And then we ask ourselves, what does that mean? What does that look like? And here God is talking about us, right? Being fearfully and wonderfully made, being intricately woven. I love those words. So again, maybe our resolution is to love ourselves a little bit more. Maybe we don't really know exactly what that looks like. What would that look like? What would we need to understand about ourselves in order to love ourselves better? And maybe looking at this Psalm or so many other places where God expresses God's love for us, um, our intention might come out to be enough. We're enough or wonderfully made or intricately woven. Can you imagine if we concentrated on those words, intricately woven for the year, how that might make us feel about ourselves? So I don't know if this helps you. Maybe it's more confusing. Um, I don't know. Thanks for bearing with me while I kind of, you know, fought my way through reflecting on this blog that I read today. Um, but I did choose a word um, for this year, and I don't think I've shared it with many people, so I'll share it with you today. I've spent probably the last month or so um, really reflecting on, again, this a whole idea of like, what what is it that I want to be intentional about this year, and where do I want my focus to be? And so I've chosen the word connect um, for my word of the year, um, because I feel like I want to be more connected to God. I want to be more connected to my friends and my neighbors. Um, I miss that. Of course, we all do in this crazy pandemic. Um, but I really want to be more intentional about connecting with people. And whether that's, you know, across the table from somebody in my own home, um, whether that's, you know, reaching out and, and just having a phone conversation with someone that I think about a lot, um, and whether it, it might be spending some more um, deep time with God to really connect to God, not to just chat with God about my prayer concerns and my joys, um, 
but really to, to kind of deepen my connection. So I've chosen that word connect. So I, I went through this process myself. Um, and so I would encourage you maybe to do the same thing this week or over the next coming weeks. And if you want to chat about it, I would love to talk to you about what your word is um, or what you might be leaning towards. Or if you're struggling with coming up with a word, maybe we can chat about that too. And, and I can, you know, we can ask each other some questions and, and maybe just talk it out and see if something comes um, bubbling up to the surface for you. So I hope you have a great week. I hope that if you made a New Year's resolution, you're still sticking to it. But if you're struggling to stick to it, try this process, right? Resolution, ask yourself some questions. Maybe search the scripture for the answers. And then look at the words, at the intention of your resolution. And maybe that'll help you stay a bit more focused um, this year in 2022. So in the meantime, I hope you have a great week. I hope you're all staying healthy and well and safe. Um, and I'll talk to you next week. Take care.